cute, lovable, and adorable. All adjectives used to describe the cats who hold a special place in our hearts. And while this video is about cats, it's hard to imagine life without dogs. Domesticated from wild gray wolves some 18,000 years ago, these carnivores joined human society as our friends, even as part of our families. But what about cats? When and how did these furball factories begin coexisting with humans? Today's video is all about cats. Over the course of many millennia, wild cats have evolved into these five subspecies. The modern house cat was domesticated from just one of them. That subspecies was Phyllis sylvestris libica, a desert cat from Africa. That is why cats around the world don't vary too wildly in terms of size and general appearance. Okay, then when did these wild cats start living with humans? Our answer can be found in Egyptian reliefs, mythology, and mummies. Bastet, an Egyptian goddess, is depicted as having the head of a cat. The Egyptians even painted reliefs of cats and mummified cat skeletons. It's funny to think that even a civilization as grand and illustrious as the Egyptians was overtaken by cat lovers. Anyway, the discovery of these Egyptian cat artifacts and records led scientists to believe that the domestication of cats occurred around 4,000 years ago. However, in 2004, a discovery on the Mediterranean island of Cyprus turned this whole idea onto its head. Professor Jean-Denis Vigne of the French National Museum of Natural History made an incredible archaeological discovery at a historic ancient village. They discovered a 9,500-year-old grave, which encapsulated a person and an eight-month-old kitten. Seeing how the bones were still intact and hadn't decomposed, Professor Vigne was certain that the deceased person and kitten had been buried together. As this would lend credence to the notion that human-feline bonds had existed for longer than we thought, he published a paper about his findings in Science. As a result of his study, scientists began to study whether they should push feline domestication back to 9,500 years ago. But maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves here. It's nice to know when we domesticated cats, but what about how? Dr. Melinda Zeter says that humans have domesticated animals via three main pathways. First up, we have the prey pathway. It goes something like this. After hunting a species of wild animal for a while, one day somebody thinks, hey, isn't hunting these guys just a bit tedious? I know, right? If only there were a better way. Hey, why don't we just catch a few of them and breed them? After this idea takes hold, instead of hunting the animal in the wild, we would fence it in for breeding, domesticating them over a long period of time. Prey path animals include pigs, sheep, and goats. Of course, cats aren't a part of this club. Second, we have the directed pathway, which isn't much different from the prey pathway. We just replace food with transportation. This is how we domesticated the donkey, horse, and camel. We don't ride cats around, so we can safely exclude them from this club as well. Finally, our third domestication method is the commensal pathway. This is when a species of wild animal benefits from living with humans, and thus adapts to live with us. Sometimes, wild animals are attracted to human food often enough for us to naturally become close to them. And if humans benefit from the wild animal's presence, the two species can begin to coexist. It's a mutually beneficial relationship. A prime example of this happening is with dogs. Dogs would help humans hunt, while humans would give dogs lots of yummy treats. Eventually, dogs became our companions. We think there's a good chance that cats were domesticated this way too. Humans provided cats with food, and in return, cats bestowed upon us the title of, a uh, butler? Mm, yeah. How exactly did cats help us again? Well, here's what they did, ladies and gentlemen. Catch rats. Now, is there any evidence that we first bonded with cats because of their rat-catching abilities? There is. In 2014, Chinese and American researchers discovered a 5,300-year-old cat skeleton in the Chinese agricultural village of Kuan Hukun. 
the researchers analyzed carbon isotopes from the cat's skeleton and amazingly discovered that the isotope ratios matched those of the village's crops. From this, we can infer that the cats had caught rats stealing from the villagers' grain silos, mentions Professor Fiona Marshall. After the agricultural revolution, rat populations around human settlements began to explode. And you know what they say, wherever there are rats, you can expect to find some cats. At some point, we just got used to having them around. The cats, not the rats. From our perspective, these feline grain guardians were quite helpful. And for the cats, human homes make great hunting grounds. Thanks to this zero-sum game, cats comfortably nestled themselves into human society. But wait! Earlier we mentioned that cats descended from a certain species of African cat, yes? Does this mean that cats spread out into the world from a single point? Molecular geneticist Eva Maria Geigel suggested that cats were domesticated in the Middle East around 10,000 years ago and spread out into Egypt, Europe, and certain parts of Asia around 6,500 years ago. After that, boats played a large role in the cat's quest for world domination. Sailors from the Middle East and Egypt often brought cats along for their voyages. Rats frequently raided food stocks and gnawed at the ship's ropes, so cats were nice to have around. Because of this, cats crossed from Egypt to 4th century Rome and advanced into the Baltic Sea during the Middle Ages to sail with the Vikings. Wait, we're almost there! During the Age of Discovery, cats sailed with us across the Great Atlantic into the Americas, into Australia too. Slowly but surely their numbers increased, as did their variety. Of course, cats had traveled across the Silk Road into Eastern Asia long before any of this. And that's how cats conquered the world. They now number in the 600 millions. Although the success of our furry friends probably wouldn't have been possible without the help of their human caretakers. If we could let them know that somehow, maybe they'd treat us humans with just a teensy bit more respect, eh? Not that they need to. One can dream. <laughs> that concludes our cat story, folks. Wowee, that was fun. Science is a window to the world. And this has been Science Dream. Thank you for watching.